Welcome to Tigers Untapped, a Bluff City Media podcast. Stepping up to the microphones are your hosts, Trey Lasley and TJ Willis. Pull up your chair, grab your favorite brew, and enjoy the conversation. Now, let's get to the show. What up, what up? We back with another edition of uh, Tigers Untapped 2 and 0 edition. Shh. TJ destroyed the Revved Wolves. <laughs> I mean, honestly, they deserve that. I feel like we deserve that as fans. <laughs> they wore all black to his fitting to his, their funeral. To Butch Jones's funeral. Yeah. I like, I Does mean, he still have a job? Surprisingly. I I am honestly shocked. What is today? Monday? I give it till Wednesday before we may hear something. Maybe Michigan State will hire him or something. I don't Whoa, know. Whoa, Teach. Trey, today we are sipping on Jean Deli. How would you pronounce that? It's a Wiseacre beer. Jean Deli. Jean Deli. Looks like J- TJ Jean gave me Delis. something with black tea and lemons in it. I don't know, man. It's new. It's it's an ice pick style locker with black tea and lemons. This feels like a direct competitor to uh, Hushmane. A little golf course oh, I didn't brew. Think about, oh, wait. This is John Daly on the front because he's. Yeah. Flower pants, crush and John de Lee. Yeah. You just not got that? I just not paid attention to it. Wow. Timothy. It hits you, huh? Disappointing. Wow. A lot of tea in there. A lot of black tea. <laughs> That'll do it, brother. Oh, yeah. That's uh weird. Teach, how'd the weekend go? That's Other than good. Kenny not uh, getting your media pass so that you had to stay home and you couldn't go to Jones Boogie. I know. Is this not... Atypical of, I guess atypical is not the right word, but atypical of a state. Is this typical of a state though? I mean, I don't know. I've never dealt with their. They uh, well, no, they they suck on the on the field, and they also suck at getting press credentials sent to the right people. I can't imagine you probably really needed any credentials to get down there on the field. Yeah. Though. <laughs> what are you gonna do? They had a a guy named Cletus was watching the, the gate. Oh, well, cousin Cletus. That's all Timothy would have to have done. Let his hair down and throw on a, a thick Arkansas accent. Hey, brother. A tank top. There you go. Hey, tank hey, top brother. and some flip flops. Some jor- jorts. Yeah. On the um, sideline. They'd have been like, oh, it's Cletus's cousin. Come on down. You look like you have a Cletus. I probably do have a Cletus somewhere in there. I don't know. It was good, though, man. I, I stayed at home and just watched it with my son. There you he's, go. he's starting to understand football. I uh, <clears throat> I tried to watch as much as I could. We had a uh, couple's shower for my sister-in-law and her future husband are getting married. Mm. You're such uh, a sellout. I know. So I watched some ridicule. of it on my phone, and then I saw we had it under control, so I watched the full game. Are you record and watch I, back later, guy? Uh, Yeah. Uh, well, with ESPN Plus, I don't have to record anymore. But, uh, yeah, I watched back. Wait, what? What do you mean? You don't have to record with ESPN Plus. Event replays, it's just bro. A replay, just bro. go to watch. You Event just go replays. In there and type in Memphis Tigers. And Dang, I never knew that. It's all cataloged, my homie. Wow. It's on demand, dude. Man. Timothy. Man, I never knew that. Uh, but I am also, I'll tell you what I did with Bethune Cookman. Uh, was at the game and got home and rewatched it. I'm one of those as well. Yeah, that's not the one I'm rewatching, honestly. I mean, I usually don't, but it was the first game. I was hype. I was ready for football. I needed more of it. This is, I think Arkansas State was a good one you can rewatch. And I, I, we can kind of talk on, on why. Well, especially for me, because I was watching on a uh, six inch iPhone for, <laughs> uh, I don't know, roughly 30 minutes or sure. so cut up. So this is why you should get an Android like TJ. Why is it so bigger true. than what's wrong with six inches? I'll let Kenny answer that. If you can have eight, then why? <laughs> it's all how you use it, Kenneth. It's a very good point. Are you? Still talking about phones? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with this bad boy. Look at that. Trey rocked the iPhone mini for... That I did. And I've had a horrible... Man, it was like 10 years. If they're listening, Verizon, we know that you probably are. I don't even want a sponsorship for the show because it's been a rough month for me and you guys. First, they gave us the wrong... I've had to go to the Verizon store in Germantown five times in two weeks. And I'm still... It's not settled still. It's unbelievable. Gave me the wrong phone... Told me they were giving us uh, the promotion for the new phones. My new bill is coming. They, that's not happening. So my bill's gone up after they told me it wasn't going up. It's just a, it's a shit show. Yeah. I'm about to switch to AT&T. Comcast Xfinity is getting me right now. 
They just went up two hundred dollars for no oh, reason. Oh, that I'm that's yeah. on another. Oh, we another I just day. went through this. Just dropped um, cut yeah. the cable. We're so off topic though. If you don't, in we the haven't comments, started. Yeah. If you guys are if you guys are streamers, if you've cut the cord, let us know what the best streaming. I've no, it's YouTube TV. Is it for sure? I think so. well, you know, we're not going to get Grizz, but. You got to go direct TV stream to get the Grizz. See, yeah. my parents have direct TV stream and I've used it. It works great. But I do. I feel like the YouTube TV is probably the way to go. And then if you split it with others, then you have a little leftover to get Bally Sports and then you got your Grizz. Would you watch, would you be willing to watch the Grizzlies on Bally Sports live stream, their app? I've heard it's terrible. I, I have heard it's awful. This is the problem for me in dropping Xfinity is I cannot stand watching sports streamed. No. One, because when it's, it's a, a little, Memphis game, yeah. Either the Discord or what Twitter, I find out stuff that happens 30 seconds before it happens. I hate that. Two is I'm alive better, and it ruins it, right? I see the odds change, and the play hasn't happened yet, and I'm like, oh, well, shit, they just took that to the house because Memphis all of a sudden went from you know plus 100 to minus 150. I'm like, okay, well, they just scored. I know what happened, and I can't, I can't deal with it. Degenerate, man. We did, we did. We cut the cord for a year, and I went back to Xfinity for that very reason. Because Timothy and our, our friends group chat, was they'd be blowing me up about stuff that happened, mm-hmm. and I hadn't seen it yet. I had to get off Twitter during Grizzlies games because of that very reason. Sure. But that's all the fun in it. You're, you feel like you're watching it with the crew. Anyway, we are way off topic. So Timothy, off topic. How about that 37-3 to beatdown, suck a beatdown? I mean, I... St- we started off with it. I, I think we deserve that after that blowout, what was it, two years ago, and it looked like you were about to just annihilate them. And then they came back, and I think it was the 55-50 final. Yeah. I think, I mean, everybody going into this. Hell, last year was close. Was it afraid of this game because of that very reason? I mean, the last two years you've played an Arkansas State team that is really below average, I mean, bad. And struggled. And you have looked equal yeah. to them. Yeah, it it feels good to blow them out. And what's weird is like we didn't really do it. If you watch the game, it wasn't in like a. It didn't feel like you were blowing them out. Truly. Uh, no, I mean like it, <clears throat> outside of the first quarter, I would say it felt like we dominated the game in all three phases. Well, sure. I, I guess if we you look definitely at it, came out to a pretty slow start. You're up three zero after the first quarter. You had a couple of three and outs, punted, I think, three out of your first four mm-hmm. drives. Like, we definitely came out slow. It just didn't feel like you were smacking them around. And I think that's because everything was scored in the second quarter. Yeah. You I had 21, so. you had a 21 point second quarter. Yeah. And then other than that, obviously, you didn't really score much else. I mean, maybe a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, by that point, I the think it's, it's been put on cruise control. I think they alluded that a little bit in the post game. Is like, you're up 24 to 3. You're kind of slowing it down, chewing up some clock, sure. retaining possession, and then you get two tutties. Uh, hey, I'll tell you this. I loved Hargrave's tutty at the uh, end of the game. No kneeling there for me. Hargrove took that thing. It was like 20 yards almost. Yeah. I'm As surprised time they didn't expired. Call the knee. You know what I didn't like? Is our boy Silverfield declining the extra to point. kick the PAT. Are you serious? <laughs> what do you get out of that? Though? Go for two. Do you? So you have no problem with them running up the last second touchdown? I guess running a real play. There I mean, you just running the ball up the middle, make a tackle. Uh, yeah, the game's not over. I, I have no problem with it. I, I don't I, have any problem at all. If you want, if you don't want me to score, stop me. Like yeah. I get it, but I mean, it's not like. Well, I say that it's not like we we're throwing the ball. We literally threw a touchdown thirty seconds before that. It just got called back. I don't know, which I was just, awful. I need more Tevin Tutties. That should have been. That was awesome. It should have stood. Well, that was so sad. Every, I mean, the whole sideline went nuts when they called that back. That was tough. Yeah, because Dustin was just sitting in the end zone, hanging yeah, out wide. By I mean, so <laughs> wide open, so wide open. Um, you mentioned one thing about Memphis controlling the clock. They are fifth in the nation in time of possession with thirty six minutes a game, and they're only basically one minute behind Rice, who's number one. Speaking of Rice, did we? Did the American get the better Houston University? Yeah, I think that's clear. I mean, that was established this weekend, was it not? (laughs) Yeah, I think the Houston Bowl happened Uh, and Rice won. 28 to nothing at one point. Now, they ended up only winning 45-43 in double overtime, I think it was. But 
Shout out to the out. They're are they a little bit of a, a dark horse? I mean, better than what people maybe anticipated in the American. I definitely think they're better than what everyone thought they were going to be. I think that everyone assumed like Rice, um, Charlotte were going to be like kind of like the bottom feeder teams. USF maybe down in there. Well, they were already. We already knew they were garbage. We kind of you know inherited that one. So that one kind of you know it was, it's been there with us the entire but, time. Yeah, we they won the Houston Bowl. And I think we've the American has come out ahead by the the addition uh, of Rice with the loss of Houston. So, jumping back to the A State game, what stood out to you? Like, what were some? Not, I don't say like eye popping things, but like what, what what just what was exciting? What was not? I mean, the defense. Yeah, we're talking two games in. Now you gave up 235 yards after a week when you didn't even give up 100. Right, so you're sitting at what like 160. Uh, a, a week Sounds about is right. what you're giving up. So I think it puts you now at second at uh, total defense overall. I think Syracuse is right above you. Mm-hmm. Um, they've given up three points in two weeks. Our guy Blake Mayfield went through statistically to try to find the last time we'd only given up three points the first two games, and he got to the 1950s and was like, I'm, I can't look through the anymore. The limit does not exist. Yeah. I don't, it's never happened. He also looked up uh, – the last time we gave up this many yards, this few yards in the first two games, and I think it was like 2,000 was Jeez. the last time. You know, I, obviously, this the numbers are somewhat indicative on who you played, right? Like, yes, sure. it was Bethune-Cookman, and it was Arkansas State. But the defense is still talented. You can see it happening on the field live. Like, you see guys swarming to the ball. There's going to be three or four guys at every tackle, it seems like. So yeah. it's not that just, like, you're playing well, it's, and it's, inferior it's teams. It's little things that we missed previously. And I get the level of competition, but let's be real. Like, I know that this Arkansas State team is bad, but we have played bad teams the last couple of sure. years, and they have put up points and yards on us. I mean, Nickel State did it. I think they put up like 250 yards or something. Southern, yeah, I you know, that. back that was in a little dicey at first. Whatever, 19 or 18? Yeah, I think it was 18. But yeah, you know, we were up like 21, 14 at halftime or something like that. I mean, um, so it's not to say we haven't played this level of competition before, because we have, and they have moved the ball. They've put up points. We've struggled. Sure. It's also like we're making open field tackles like we never have before. Our secondary looks better than it's I think I've ever seen it. all across the board, right? How about that pick by Cam Smith was disgusting. Very aware truly to get from the feet center in. field. Yeah. Runs all the way to the sideline. The awareness to get up there and get his feet in. Yeah. To pick that off. DJ Bell picks six. The defense now has scored more points in two weeks than they've given up in two weeks. Seven to three. You know, it sounds cliche as hell, but obviously if you keep winning the turnover batter like that, like yeah, I mean, what are the chances you lose? Yeah, right? I mean, you lost it week one, right? But now you're plus two on the year turnover wise because you had four this week to none offensively, so that puts you at five, five to three. Sure. Um, I mean, another defensive secondary guy we hadn't even talked about yet. I felt like he dropped thirty-seven <laughs> picks. Is uh, freaking Brumfield? Yeah, but they dude kept had going. What do you have? Five pass break? Yeah, they were throwing at him all night, and he was just batting that thing down like it was Kenny out there on the volleyball court. So many kills. Come on, man! <laughs> I just need him, Diego. If you're listening, I just need you to pick one, my guy. I feel like he dropped eight picks. I mean, I mean, I, it's better than not making the pick and them completing the pass, but he I, was all over the place. The defense in general was was great, just absolutely great, right? I think we've seen it on the defensive line. Trench baby coming up with two sacks kind of later in the yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, what? You had two sacks total. Two sacks. So, well, you said two sacks from Trench baby, and I know he didn't have the only two. Jara Anderson. But Jara Anderson, I think Boy he Bear split had one. one. No, he had a solo. He had he a got, solo? In the stats, they listed solo. Which, shout out. The roster has him at 260. He is not 260. Bro, we made a big deal about him being We've in talked there about at Trench Baby, the both of them, neither one of them are 260. Trench Baby's a 300 for sure. And Trench Baby's probably or not Trench Baby. Anderson's probably pretty close. He is probably he 280 to 90. He, he if he was three bills, I'm not shocked. Yeah. No, two sacks, nine tackles for a loss, two picks, seven pass breakups. Two forced fumbles. I mean, 
It's just, it's just so much flexibility. I mean, Chandler Martin was all over the place. Yeah. Like about seven total tackles, five solo, tackle to a uh, tackle and a half for a loss, a forced fumble. Like Ryan said he played three different positions. All the oh, yeah, he, pulled, he plays yeah. Sam, Mike, and Will. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, how flexible are you? And he's so fast, dude. What did so y'all think fast. about his post-game comments? Uh, about what specifically? Just just hearing him talk. I mean, we haven't heard him talk a oh, whole lot. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think... He's that, a great interview. Yeah, he's a really good He's interview. also getting me real excited about this defense. Well, he's very personal. Like, person, personable? Personable. Personable. Yeah. And obviously, it's kind of hard to replace Jalen. But like he seems like someone who could be a vocal leader going up, are, and you've got years for him. Okay. Was well, because Jalen's. I was like, why are we replacing Jalen already? Well, he's going to have to graduate eventually, and, and we'll Chandler Martin's a sophomore, so you got some years for him. So, um, being able to have a guy like that who can play three different positions for you, flies around the field. Assuming you can keep him here, right? I think that's like the biggest thing. Obviously, talent kind of finds right. its way to bounce around, but because um, trans. Transferring up a level doesn't count. Yeah, I don't think that counts. You, right? Yeah, I don't think it counts. So, I mean, I'm not trying to kick the guy out. I want him to stay here for the next three years that he's got. But, um, gosh, I didn't. He's only a sophomore. Yeah, he's that's only amazing. A sophomore. Yeah, yep. That's a lot to build around, and he's good. You think about that? Gosh, DJ Bell's a redshirt freshman. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow! Dude, and DJ adds- Bell is a revelation, man. He is so good out there. His speed and his size is unreal to me. His size, I think a lot of people forget that he is one of the bigger corners. He's like 6'2", and that's not super common in the American. So when you do have the the taller wide receiver, like the the 6'2", 6'3", wide receiver, he's just kind of blending in. So it's not like you have, and this is a, no way a shot at Greg Rubin, but when you have 5'9", Greg Rubin versus 6'3", uh, Rashi Rice, like the, in previous years, like there's a big size comparison there. Well, you kind of eliminate that with DJ Bell or even a, a Julian Barnett, someone yeah. who's a taller, more physical corner. Yeah. What have y'all thought so far about the Greg Rubin move to safety? It seems to be working out pretty well. I haven't seen any deep bombs over him, so I have no complaints. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I don't, I don't have any issues with it at all. And if Diego and DJ keep playing the way they are at the corners, like. It made sense. That was yeah. the right move. Yeah. And to I, think, and isn't Brumfield a sophomore too? Yeah. He's young. Holy he came shoot, from TJ. Uh, I keep saying Campbellsville. That's not right. Uh, it is Campbellsville. Yeah. Right? Is it Campbellsville? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's another guy who transferred up that potentially, potentially could leave again if something were to stop. Happen. So throwing that thing out. I, I just saying. So defense was great. I think we can get that out in the open. Defense was great. Everybody, no matter what position you are in defense, you were great. So let's jump to the offense where I think there were some, I don't want to say struggles, right? But I mean, I think that's probably the fair word for it, though. I think it's fair. I mean, like we said, you started out slow. You're, let's look at it. You pulling it up by drive? Yeah. Yeah. I think that what we learned is. So at a, you're, your first three out of four drives didn't result in any points. You had back-to-back punts, kicked a field goal off of uh, Cam Smith's first mm-hmm. interception. You recover a fumble the next drive from Arkansas State, drive all the way down inside the 10, and then miss, which was brutal. A twenty, I think it was 27-yarder. Yeah, can't do that, man. So it was definitely a slow start. Slow is uh, an interesting word for it, but yeah, it's. Um, I think what was frustrating is there was a lot of zone read, and we're not particularly blocking well with the zone. And I'm curious if they're going to. I don't. Get- yeah, I, I don't. The pass protection is fine. Yeah. Right. Like Seth's not getting hit nearly as much as he has in the past. He's not having to take off nearly as much. But our run blocking is. It's still not there. Like, and it's interesting because I'm curious if it is either our guys not blocking the right guys. Because with the zone, like, there's just so much. Like, you basically just cover a gap, and it's kind of a timing thing how everyone's flowing together. And if one guy's off or one guy doesn't get around to the play side of someone's shoulder of the defender's shoulder, then someone's in the backfield. You know, I, and I'm curious if it is. Maybe execution on our end. Is it execution on the 
defense? Are they just scheming better against us? Is it a combo? I mean, I felt like Is we it, were so bad in short yarded situations. Oh, we the were other awful. Night. Awful. Absolutely awful. Just getting stuffed every time. Which is curious. Like it, I'm curious because like if you get away from the zone stuff and start doing more power, which is I, I want to say that's how Blake scored all of his touchdowns against Bethune Cookson. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, they there. kept lining up uh Chisholm at like the H back and then he goes in motion, lines up at fullback. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did it a couple of times the other night and it still it just didn't work. Well, just pulling guards. Have Carter pull around, find your gaps and things like that. I think it's obviously we're getting to like the the how the sausage is made in terms of football plays and things like that. But like, is it time for sausage already? It's not time for sausage yet. Uh, it could be. I don't know. But I think giving given your running backs talents and their abilities to see a hole, hit a hole, and explode through it, and also reading cutbacks, the read is perfect. So for your running back, Reed makes so much sense. It's just the offensive line has to be better at executing those blocks. I don't know if it's start putting deuce blocks on some of the inside guys because that's where it's all getting blown up is right inside. Yeah, do we not need to bounce some stuff outside? You know what we also didn't see really at all this week compared to the Bethune game? What's that? None of the like quick screen passes or anything like getting the ball out to Kobe or Demir very quickly yeah. and just letting them try to do something. And I'm wondering if that is, it's all read based for the most part. So sure. if they're playing up close on you, you, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Because then like, someone's I mean, yeah, they were, if they're playing deeper were off pressing. of you. Yeah. If they're playing deeper off of you, you've got that time to catch it, turn, make a play. So, you know, as much as we praise Seth for being so good. He is the one making these reads on these plays. Yeah. So a lot of it's option, and they did it against, and we'll talk about it, I guess, pretty much every week now because it seems like they run the play the last two games where they zone read to the left, and, the, and then everyone crashes left, and then he, he takes off right. He takes off and starts that running corner. and reads the corner. If the corner steps up on him to make the tackle, he just dumps it right over him. They did it against Bethune. They did it against Arkansas State. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they're be able to keep doing it every week, especially now that Seth is out there telling people to watch film. <laughs> um, that was funny. I, I don't mean, know if they weren't picking up on their own, they're going to know about it now. They're, they have definitely ran read option. That's how Seth ran his touchdown in. I mean, they're running read option. What we know they have RPO. Run by Seth too, dude. Making that first guy miss, getting in there. <laughs> He's got he that just... that Seth shuffle. He always, <laughs> he loves it so much. It's uh, the same shuffle every time. One of the things that Jarvis mentioned in the game, I don't know if y'all are listening to that bro- or to the radio broadcast, but one of the things he mentioned is um, how he has been noticing when they line Chisholm up in the backfield as a fullback mm-hmm. that he hasn't seen them run a play where the tailback goes the same direction as the fullback yet. Yeah. Which I, is, and he was like expressing frustration. He was like, why do you have him back there if you're not going to. As a lead blocker. As a lead blocker, if you're not going to let him lead block. Well, there's misdirection in that too, though, right? Because linebackers are taught to read the fullback. Where the fullback goes, you go. And so if fullback runs left and linebackers start fading to what would be to their right to follow the fullback, then who's guarding the line, the, the running back on the other side? So I, I get that, but eventually you're going to have to have the hat on the hat. So yeah. I don't know. I want to see him personally spread it out. Quit putting in, you know, Two tight end sets. I mean, obviously you can have some tight end sets, but like if we have the shifty running backs we think we have, why not spread people out and just give them room to run? Yeah. Space. Yeah. Let empty that thing. box out as much as possible. So go like single backfield, single <laughs> running back backfield and yeah, spread I, out four yeah, receivers. I would, I would spread out four wide receivers and, and just reduce Space how many are in, yeah. Reduce how many are in the box. I put your wide receivers. I'm talking way out. I guess there's not a hat. Is there a hash in college or not a hash? Yeah. Yeah, put them way. I can't remember if college or not. It's just wide. Yeah, just put them out as far as possible. Really open that box up. And I think you give Blake and Sutton space to drop, like just absolutely cut somebody up. It's going to be a big play after big play. Obviously, I don't know any better than Cramsey or anybody else, but like it just seems like it makes sense, right? Do you not? Um. Are you concerned about the run game now? I mean, we go from a week, and granted, it was Bethune-Cookman, FCS level. 
But Sutton had 115 yards, I think, 111. Five carries for five yards at Arkansas State for Sutton. Yeah. I mean, inside zone will do that, man. You live and die by you it. You talk about Watson, 20 attempts, 51 yards. Yeah. Uh, so some of this is misleading, too, right? Some of this goes back to that time of possession. Count the number of handoffs to those folks in the first half when you were already up. You know what was it, twenty four to zero or twenty four to three? Yeah, and then all you did was control the clock from there on out. Yeah, and so how many handoffs happened in the second half? And then they know exactly what you're doing. You're just running up the middle, running yeah. up the middle. All you're trying I to do is the, control the clock there. We're just not used to that style, right? Sure. Of getting up twenty four zero and then trying to. I mean, you're talking about a guy in Norvell who was putting up seventy seven on. Yeah, folks. but he got up big and got super conservative too. We're not going to ignore that. But is that not what kind of got but Ryan his, in trouble last year? His big was bigger. His pick was a lot bigger. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely what got Ryan in trouble. I think we can oh, specifically talk about the Houston game we don't despite need to do all that of again. the freak show other aspects that occurred in that game. But I think that definitely plays a large part in it. Yeah. At some point, like, you can tell when a team is going to be competitive, right? In the Houston game, for example, like, they but weren't also, down and out of it. I also think A-State was down and out of it. The never difference in that is... Not that you can afford to go conservative necessarily, but you've got a defense where you feel much more comfortable doing so. And I think, Kenny, you asked that question this week after and post game was like, does it change your offensive philosophy knowing that you've got a defense that instills its will on the opponent? And I don't think it was the response most people were probably wanting to hear, but I think it is. Some of that is definitely true is like, you get a lead like that, and you feel more confident and comfortable, and like, hey, we're just gonna kind of run this clock out, let the defense do its thing, and I just think here. Ryan was completely honest and allowed us to see kind of what his what kind of what his, one of his values as a coach is is yeah. protecting leads instead of expanding leads, and right. I think that's relatively frustrating. I think for most Tiger fans because oh, they, it's because yeah, they're not accustomed to that style. Like we're saying, yeah. like they want the, and it's much more exciting. To win a game, fifty six to thirty five, as opposed to even thirty seven to three. I don't know. Thirty seven to three was pretty nice. I mean, it was nice, but especially that second quarter. But let's be real: the second half, you only score one touchdown in the third and one in the fourth. The very last play of the game is that to me a, is just a drag I, of a second half. Yeah, like that to me is just kind of like it did feel pretty slow. You, you don't have like I just I, I wonder. And again, we might be asking somebody to be just completely outside of their, I guess, their character as a coach and what they do. But with the level of scrutiny that's on the team, the level of of engagement that you want to see from the fans, you're asking people to come out and then saying, hey, for an entire second half, we're going to just run it up the gut yeah, <laughs> and yeah. punt. I'll and we're going to run it up the maybe, gut and punt. Maybe like, this doesn't make sense and it's not true but I, I and i wonder if silverfield's time in the nfl is a reason for this but it feels like a much more nfl style 100%. to do that as opposed to yeah what you see a lot in college is just keep doing your thing keep putting up points and that seems like nfl you get a two three score lead and you kind of well because scores don't matter right. you just win yeah right but in college score scoring matters for rankings it matters for you know the way that People view you. It matters. It matters for a lot of things. I think style points really only matter if your job is on the line, or you are playing a ranked opponent. I think that's really the only. Or time. you're at a place like Memphis, where you have like you don't have a huge core fan base. You've got to get the like just general fan out, and the only way to do that is to be. Now, if he scored, right? like, if they won seventy to three, it's not going to change anyone's opinion as opposed to outside of thirty-seven be, to three. I don't, I don't think, think that changes anything. Totally opinion. disagree with that. Because it's Arkansas true. State. No one cares. No, 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 no. It's not just Arkansas State. I, we're talking about on a weekly. Like, you go out and you're throwing Weekly, up. yes. Weekly yeah. changes things. Sorry, I thought you just meant in that game specifically. No, I don't mean... Oh, no. Whether or not you just scored 70 on Arkansas State yeah. the rest of the season. I was like, no one no. cares about that. I'm dude. saying night in, night out, you're going out and trying to put up as many points as possible. It's more of a show. Sure. Yeah. I would agree with that. And I think that may not be the case at all college football programs. Yeah. But definitely in Memphis, where you have what a core of well, twenty five thousand ish fans that are sure. fans, and then you've got to bring in 
10, 15 casual that are, you know, their number one team is somewhere else. But if you're exciting and fun, they're going to come to a Thursday night game against Navy when their team's not playing. But I think you also get that if you just win. Even if you're just I think winning, I think that, you, yeah. you'll get that. So, well, I mean, let's say they run through Navy, then they run through Boise or Mizzou, then Boise. Yeah, Mizzou, Mizzou, then Boise. Yeah. Mizzou, then Boise, and you're heading to an undefeated Tulane coming in. You're, what, 5-0 and oh, then? Oh, it's going to be a wild game. Yeah, I, I think you have people showing up. Oh, more people than normal. Oh, yeah. And we don't lose to Tulane at home, so. Um, all right, TJ, anything else stick out from uh, the business trip over to Jonesburg before we take a break? I mean, I just think the passing looked fine to me. I, I thought that we had a couple big plays through the air. Um, we didn't throw it too much. I don't have the number in front of me. You may have yours. 21 receptions. 21. Eight different guys, 21 catches, 239 yards, two tutties. Yeah, we saw Lanfear used more. I was finally glad to see that. I mean, we've kind of been like yeah, pretty tight end dominant for a couple of years, and then he was a no-show game one. I was like, all right, well, think, let's get weird. And then obviously he's back now. He gets four receptions on, what, five targets, something like that. But, again, that goes to – just kind of how in control you had the game, right? You had 41 rushes on the night to mm-hmm. 21 passing it. I have, well, a, I have a question. I'm sorry, 29 attempts. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question for you. So Blake Mayfield, beat writer for Bluff City Media, <coughs> who's doing a fantastic job, by the mm-hmm. way. Um, 100%. Doing a really good job. He positioned a, a question on Twitter or on X after the game with a picture of kind of the stadium, right, of Jonesboro Centennial Bank Stadium. And he said, if you were to take – this stadium expanded by 20, maybe 30,000 seats, which would be what Memphis would need for a, a legitimate stadium. Would you enjoy this kind of stadium, This the way it looks, where it's at? What do y'all think on that? What are y'all's thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think so. Only because they have those sick waterfalls in the corner. I think. <laughs> I said the waterfalls mess a tray. I, I mean, I like the end zone is like their, um, it's like bar style seating. Yeah. yeah, it's just like tall tables you can kind of stand at. They deliver food to your seat. I think they still do that. Like you use an app, you download it, and then someone's like a food runner just picks up food from the concessions and brings it to you, so you don't have to miss any of the game. Um, they have their they have a football facility at the north no south end zone of their stadium where the football team comes out of. It's like their locker room and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just a cool, and it's got a suite above it. So I think if they could do that, I know they're not going to because we've seen the renderings, but um, imagine like the football team running out and then you have like um, suite boxes above it that's like the recruiting room. So instead of being pushed off in that concrete jungle at Simmons Bank now, you have a glass building and, you know, recruits and their family can be up there in the air conditioning uh, watching the game. They could also be on the sidelines, whatever, so... I think something like that would be cool. Yeah. I think it would be. I mean, I I honestly have not been over there in a couple of years. I mean, I say a couple. I haven't been to a game at that stadium. and It's gone through a lot of renovation. Yeah. I mean, since the last time. They did not have a running waterfall the last time I was well, they there. They got two so. now, baby. Um, but based just, I mean, on the aerial shots, the pictures I've seen, I would, yeah, I would be down for it. It looks like a, and I mean this like respectfully, a, like a glorified high school stadium. Like a Texas high school stadium. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what, I mean, UCF plays in a non-glorified high school stadium. Yeah, I mean, like, it is like a mile high, like, just tall, straight up. Yeah. High walls, the concessions and restrooms are underneath you directly. Like, you look up, you see the seats and stuff like that. It's kind of weird, but it's a stadium. It's nice. It's fine. Better than some parts of the Liberty Bowl. So. We'll see in two years. Jeez. Ask me again in two years. Kenneth. It does change things. Uh, all right, we'll wrap that up. Uh, when we get back, we will preview Navy, which will be tomorrow night mm-hmm. by the time that this comes out. Uh, and then we'll talk a little basketball news that dropped today. We'll give you a thunder picks and fade TJ, and then we will uh, we'll get out of here. So come back.
Bluff City Media and Bluff City NIL are proud partners of Coaching for Literacy, a Memphis nonprofit using the power of sports to impact childhood literacy. When you donate to Bluff City NIL through Coaching for Literacy, your gift is 100% tax deductible. This partnership is a win, win, win. Tiger student athletes win in the NIL landscape. Coaching for Literacy wins by engaging Tiger student athletes in this monumental cause. And most importantly, elementary students in Memphis receive support to become strong readers. To donate today, visit coachingforliteracy.org slash bluff hyphen city. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Yeah, Chris Harris, the North Memphis resident, too. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. yeah. I, I've seen, Depending on where you draw the lines, right? <laughs> I saw you. I was uh, I was driving uh, when I lived in that Crosstown area. You, you texted me. You thought I was in trouble. Yeah, you thought my car broke I down. I saw you walking down the street. <laughs> I was like, Chris Harris might be on crack. <laughs> but no, you were walking. <laughs> you were walking through North Memphis at like 9 o'clock at night. I said, Chris, you good? Well, let's get some exercise, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was I like, my that, guy, you good? I wasn't that far from the Valentine Evergreen yeah, Green line. You but know? I knew you lived out that way, but I was like, well, let me check on my guy just right, to make right. sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was like, my man, I hear just walking through North Memphis out here. Yeah, for sure. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, Teach, we got uh, the Navy mids coming into Simmons Bank on Thursday. 6.30 kick. 6.30 kick. Uh, we opened as 16.5-point favorites. It has dropped two points already, down to 14.5. I'm going to take it at 16 I've, still. I've, I'm with you. I think I'm teasing it up because this Navy team Dog water, brother. is not uh, scary by any means. I mean, I, I will say... They're still triple option. They are. Like, that's still 90% I mean, you knew of that, thing, right? But. Hiring Newberry, who'd been their defensive coordinator for four years, you knew he was... And, and I mean, just as an academy, sure. like, they've got... It's to, like an unwritten rule. They have to. I mean, there's no other option. <laughs> you should make it a, an option joke. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's still 90% of the time they're triple option, but Lavatai I mean, is throwing it a little bit more. Lavatai. He's garbage. It's going to be the third time we face this dork. He is not good, man. Watch us. This is going to be a Michael Pratt ass thing where we sit here and uh, trash we him. We trash and him. going to have a career <laughs> night. They are throwing some wrinkles. They threw the ball. He had 13. Well, they had total 18 pass attempts the other sure. night against Wagner. They won 24 to nothing, uh, up 17 0 at half, and then only scored again in the fourth quarter against the uh, ever powerful Wagner. Are the Eagles? I think that's the whole, I don't know. Something like that. Wagner. I don't know. Hey, let's not hate. The Tigers almost did the same thing in the second half against Arkansas State. They're the Seahawks. Seahawks. Mm. Uh, that is true, Kenneth. Um, they've thrown some wrinkles. They're throwing the ball more 18 times, like I said, against Wagner. I don't know in the last four years. That they've thrown the ball combined 18 times against us. I mean, look, there's still the triple option. The one thing I will say about that is Barnes has been 
I don't want to say like practicing the triple option, but they've definitely walked through the triple option of practices. Like I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. We were weeks and weeks away. This is like three weeks before the season started. And I yeah. saw them, you know, everybody just watching and reacting to the triple option. It was slow and kind of walked through and stuff like that. So I think that's just general, you know, it, you know, the, the technique of it all and reading plays and things like that. So it's not maybe maybe specific because, uh, you know, you just need to follow the ball carrier in most cases. So. I will say if I have a concern about the triple option, which I really don't, it does not freak me out anymore. I think Barnes showed last year he's very capable of scheming oh, yeah. against it and having a defense that's prepared. The only thing would be, we've talked about it a little bit in the first segment, you got a lot of young guys and a lot of new guys who I'm not sure have – Based a triple option team and to your point it's a very i mean you every play is a discipline like you got to be disciplined oh yeah same thing over and over again so if there was any concern with it it's that we've got a group of a lot of defensive guys you know minus Jeff, experienced jalen cremante those guys that were here last year that just i don't know how many times they've played a triple option team yeah i mean i don't know you're, you're on a short week as well right yeah Navy played – I'm trying to think of another team that's just going to have so many 300-pounders slash pseudo 300-pounders up front. Right. right. Obviously, Notre Dame probably has guys that are that size. But, I mean, you think Jalen is definitely going to be out there. Cormonte, I would not be shocked if he gets put out there other than over Whitlow. Um, Ellison has played really good. That's a 300-pounder. What they do at the other nose tackle position, if it's going to be Bear Anderson, is it going to be Josh White? Pounder. Is it going to be trench baby? Like I, I honestly don't know. Like we, there's so many guys that, that they can put in there. Ultimately, helps a tremendous amount, right? Oh, dramatically. Especially for a team, especially that, a running team, right? That's going to chew clock long. I mean, we saw that last year in the game or two years ago when what they had a they had like a 13 play, 10 minute, 11 minute long touchdown drive, and yeah. then we ran that reverse to Calvin Austin one play, Defense 32 right seconds. It's like the total polar opposite of yeah. a scoring drive. Um, so that del- depth, I think, will be a tremendous uh, sure. help for sure. Uh, one thing to note, we didn't talk about it, uh, recap in A-State, but do you know what we are defensively on third downs through two weeks? Defensively on third down, probably pretty good. We are – I just had it. We're like – I don't have it. I can get it. Four if of do. 28. We've only had four conversions on third down out of 28 attempts. Yeah, that's pretty good. And, Navy, and you know who's not good at third Navy's downs? He's particularly really bad they at third are down. They are doo-doo. Which is so wild They were to four me. of 13 against Wagner on third down. O of one on fourth down. Like, how are you so bad? Like, there's so many ways you can deliver that. You know what I, I used to be just terrified of as a Memphis fan? The trip option? No. Literally any third down ever. <laughs> It could be third and inches, or it could be true. third and fifteen, and I knew that it was being converted. It didn't matter. Wasn't it a few years ago they were like number they were like last in the NCAA yeah. or like, oh if, a few like years if my yeah twenty 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 one five years yeah. <laughs> every third down was ever that's ever happened has been converted on our defense that ECU game either one of them specifically oh yeah the last Pre- two Nairs years was he was scrambling every third down and would get it a walk in for third down unbelievable. Yeah, they've been particularly really bad. But I think, I mean, I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here. I think Barnes is pretty damn good. I think he schemes really well. I think he does. I mean, and well, he said it last what, year. Wasn't it Chandler were, Martin? Didn't he say that? Wasn't that one of the things he said in the post game was that that he felt like Barnes over did them. such a good job of getting them prepared yeah. that like, I mean, they knew what was happening before it was happening. Yeah, I I'm very intrigued to see how it goes. And Navy's a, an interesting team that. If you come out on offense and strike fast, then they're screwed. Oh, yeah. If you if they get from behind, they're so screwed. Yeah. You get them down early, and you don't give up. You know, you get them behind the line of scrimmage early. I mean, now with them passing a little more, it may be a little bit different. They sure. may pull something else out and, and be a little bit. But historically, you get them behind the line of scrimmage on first or second down, and it's, I mean, pretty much you're getting the ball back. I am – Super intrigued to see how it, we play in general against Navy. 
offensively and defensively, right? Because this is like your first real test, I would say. I mean, like, no disrespect to the other teams, but like, Navy's decent. They're at least conference level. Sure. I mean, it'll it'll be a much better gauge test. Yeah, I want to see where we're Arkansas at. Arkansas State. Like, I don't know if, and not even just like defensively, right? Like, I think defensively, yeah, that's obvious, right? We have a monster defensive line. We've talked about it. They can rotate eight dudes in there, and we all yeah. feel fine about it, which is bananas to think about. But with, how should I word this? With how well the DBs are playing. Do you think that allows Barnes to get a little more aggressive in terms of sending blitzes and things like that? Or do you think he's just going to say, everybody, basically, hat I think on he, hat. Yeah, I think he's lining man. up hat on hat. And I don't know. This feels like a massive Simeon Blair game to me because this is what he does. He's a run stopper. Yeah, you know, we'll kind of – well, I don't want to ruin that part, but I think Simeon could step up. I think, like, physically step up, like – come closer to the line and just basically have a, a, a cover one back there. It could be two corners, man on a free safety back there, just kind of floating around. I mean, hell if it's, if it's Cam Smith, I feel like he can just Ball free float and cover the whole 53 yards across yeah. the field at any point in time. <laughs> no so, kidding. I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked. They pack the box, challenge them to, to throw the ball a little bit more, but. Well, I mean, I guess we'll see. I mean, they'll be willing to do it, so we will. We will definitely see. Offensively, what are you? Uh, what are you feeling like? I mean, last year was a Seth threw for four, four fifteen, two touchdowns, yeah. twenty four thirty four last That's, year against his defense. We obviously know that Memphis is going to want to chew the clock. I, I think we, we've already talked about it. They're fifth in the nation in, in owning the clock, and you're not going to out clock Navy. Like it's just not. That's just not how it works. I don't think anyone out clocks Navy. I mean, it could part. work that way. It could work that way. But look at, I mean, they are at dog water this year. Actually, they're not even that high up in clock, but surprisingly, I don't see them on here at least. Uh, that's, I'm on the wrong list. That's why. Um, you're not going to out own the clock on them, right? So I think if you're Memphis, if you truly believe that your defense is as good as it is, I think you can get a little bit more aggressive on offense. Because we, we've already said it. If you get them behind and trailing, like they can't slow down the clock as, like they want to, right? Yeah. And then they also have the changes on first down. The clock's not going to stop running. So it's just going to keep moving. Memphis just line change. What's it, what are they going to do? Have a line change at offensive line? That's quite unheard of. So I, you know, I, I just think that it definitely falls in our favor that our defensive line is so deep. And, we, you know, we talk about the depth constantly. Um, I think if the offense goes out there and just starts start striking fast, I think that's the biggest play. Yeah. I want to see how we run the ball against them, too, because they're they're a good defensive front. Newberry's really good about the D-line. Playing guys in the right gaps. And well, if like this past week was any indication, I would say that we probably don't have another 100-yard rusher. I don't know. Are we I starting we a new streak? I think we I think we get a 100-yard rusher. We'll see. Uh, offensively, they got uh, their two leading rushers are Daba Fofana, hell of a name, dude. Fullback, twenty three carries, ninety yards, one tutty on the year, and then uh, our boy Ty Lavatai, twenty six carries for eighty eight yards. They do Eli Hindenrick, the like, freshman kid or whatever. Yeah, he's I think he's a sophomore. No, whatever he is, yeah. But one of the wing back, yeah, he's a sophomore. One of the wing backs looks speedy, smaller guy, but he's got seven carries for seventy eight yards, eleven point one average. So I got to keep an eye out on four and one tutty. What they've got two rushing touchdowns and one throwing touchdown on the year. That is one thing I always worried about because they caught us with that last year with that one of the guys just oh, streaking Tyler down the got. Dead middle. This was of the right field. after TJ had tried to convince all of us that Tyler Murray was much stronger as a pass defender than he was a run. He's played safety and then he forever. Got absolutely torched on a Navy he pass did get play. Torched. It was wild. I did not see that coming. He's literally a safety that they moved to linebacker. Said, "Hey man, get, grab some weight." I don't know. I I think that. Defensively, I think we match up with them. I am curious with. Um, 
number one. I'm going blank on defense. The guy who got hurt, broke his arm. For us, Davion Ross. Davion Ross, thank you. Uh, with his injury being I think out, it was a collarbone. Collarbone arm, whatever. It's so painful. Yeah. He looked I like wouldn't he know. I've never broken pain. apart. I have just looked my collarbone. Like it, it is hurt. painful. You can't do anything. Yeah. You can't take your shirt off. Whatever shirt you're wearing. Oh, I mean, his, his arm was limp, and he was not moving anything but his feet. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what they do with that. Like co- putting in coffee just seems like the easiest. Oh yeah, I mean that was, they were the aura, right? And yeah, we've seen up through two weeks. I mean, we've seen. To be honest, coffee make more plays than Ross sure. had been making at that spot. So I I don't. Not to say that Davion wasn't a big loss, but sure. I think you're that's a spot where you're okay because you've got coffee who's very capable and has at least through the first two weeks shown that he's has the ability to make plays from the the star spot. I'm curious if they if it's going to be coffee though. I think I think it is. I, I could totally see a situation where they go with like a true four three. Oh, you like, mean just for the Navy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just against Navy specifically. Yeah. Like, yeah, you'll see coffee out there because there's going to be situations where it's like third and fifteen and you don't need a two hundred and forty pound linebacker probably out there playing coverage necessarily. If you can yeah. have Coffee, who's obviously super athletic, out there covering in, in space and things yeah. like that. But um, I would just be generally curious to see if we see some more four three guys come in. Just a little bit of a change. I could see it. Like maybe. Um, and you think pulling Simeon up, right? Yeah, you could pull Simeon up. I mean, there's just so many things that they could do defensively, and then so many things they will do. That's one thing Barnes always harps on is being having a multiple front. And just being multiple in general, showing a four two five, a four three, hell, they could do a four four. I don't know. They could go full bear. I really have no clue. A little forty six action. Yeah. So we'll um, defensively, I thought Will Harbor was gone. Their linebacker, but he's their senior, six one two thirty from Frisco. He's probably their best defender. I think that's fair. Number fifty four. Uh, he had ten solo tackles the other night. Thirteen overall. Forced a fumble. Um, Mabitty Williams Jr. defensive end, another guy to keep an eye out Nailed uh, it. out for, and uh, Jordan Sanders, our other linebacker. All right, anything else uh, to keep an eye on for Navy? I think watch for big plays. I mean, that goes both ways: score big plays on offense and prevent big big plays on defense. And I think that's going to be the kind of the key of the game. Honestly, <clears throat> let me ask you this. So Silverfield, in his immediate availability today, said, you guys are going to want to see something Thursday night. You guys are going to see something Thursday night you haven't seen from us before. We put in something last night that we've never done here. I jokingly, sort of, but it could be it, that we put in a triple option package to combat the Navy triple option. What do you think it is? I want it to kind of be the wing T. I think that would be funny just to combat it. Like, <laughs> but they, you got to think Navy's defense probably plays that literally all the time. So like, not against this caliber athlete. Yeah, it's true. Although if you did that, who's the who's the wing T quarterback in that situation? <sighs> it's a I great mean, question. It's not Seth. It's a great. Can't question. afford it. You put Tevin in there. No, I personally I don't think that's what's going to be. I think they're going to go five wide, like five true wide receivers out there. Look, I just said I know. I want it if to that's spread what it, it is, out. I'm going to be so mad. I want to spread it out. I want there to be big plays as soon as possible. I don't. I'm not disagreeing. But I, we've I run five wide, and if that's what it is, no, and his we've run four wide with the with the tight end out there. Out, whatever. I that's want my point. five true wide receivers. You can't be throwing around some statement like this about nothing we've ever done before just because you're five wide without your tight end split out. How many times has he talked about? You're there right. Hasn't yeah, been a tight end. Probably is There's that. always been a tight end. Do we think it has to be offensively though? No, but like, it, I don't know. I don't think you tease something like that if it's not if it's defensively. Yeah. Or, I mean, and I don't really know what they were special could do teams. Special teams wise. Yeah. That a uh, swinging gate field goal situation. Let's go. Maybe. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't know why you would want to do that. That would be cool though. I know what it is. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. We're announcing it. Got, I know y'all are kind of joking with the fans and everything, but it's time to stop being so humble. Y'all are suiting up. 
on Thursday night. No, I would. That would definitely be something that they have left tackle, have, left tackle have never seen before. TJ Willis. That would be a terrible idea. Yeah, surefire way to uh, lose. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think five wide. You really think it's a triple option? I think it's going to be some sort of option set. Yeah. So, I can't think of anything else. Again, I think it's got to be offensively for him to kind of tease it like that. And I, I legitimately can't. I don't know what else. Like, what if we – and he's – got to think. He's been, been here seven through years, eight Norvell. Years, yeah. This is his eighth year. Like, what is something they have never done before? It's got to be the tight end thing because he's talked about it so much in the offseason. Yeah, about but how that's they've never so – like, Ran a play without a tight end. I mean, I guess, yeah, that would make sense. But it's also like – yeah, we asked about it in our interview with him. I know. And he was but like, I'm yeah, also well, like, just... how many people go out there and they're going to be like, oh, shit, there's not a tight end on the field. Will they even notice? Right, that's <laughs> yeah, what right. I'm saying. Like, you can't tease something like that if it's something that's so, like, minor and... I don't know. We lined up five wide with no tight end. I'm going to split, split Seth out I wide. I mean, I guess that could be it. But they've done that before, haven't they? I don't know. I well, they did it Brady. with Brady. Yeah, I've seen Brady So that counts. Out. I was thinking maybe Wildcat, but like we've talked about this before the game or before the podcast that yeah. you were saying that they did that. With I mean, that was our whole Henderson. offensive scheme in the 2018 AAC championship in the first half. This dude ran for 250, three touchdowns in the first half out of the Wildcat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, honestly. I, it's a, he, and it's this is weird. By Unless the way. he's talking about. The freaking skydivers or whatever, the parachuters that are coming in during the national anthem. We've never done that before. Is that what he's talking about? He said they put in. That means yeah, he to said me, they that's a did scheme. It. Yeah, they, they put it into it. the pregame plan. This is just so abnormal from Ryan. Yeah, that's where I was going with this. Because TJ it, mentioned that before we started, and I was like, "This is total," or maybe it was you, Kenny, that was like, "This is so." It's not the exact like opposite of what he does, Ryan. He's so tight-lipped on everything, and then now all of a sudden he just kind of teases this. I mean, Chris. It's very vague. Like here we yeah. are, closely related to the the program, and we can't figure it out. So like, how the hell is Navy gonna figure it out, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I really have no clue. I do think it's gonna be something offensive. My money is on going five wide and just like I do think no it would huddle. Be boom, 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 boom. If we win the toss, come out first play, and we're in the freaking wing tee, that would be pretty funny, dude. Who do you taste. think it would be lined up as the? The running back options there. I mean, I think Bull would be your fullback, and I think Sutton and Sutton and Watson and on Watson the, on the wings, yeah. and then I think you still have Seth there. Personally, did one of the did no did Sutton play quarterback? No, he's running back. Watson I think we'll was a see wide it. receiver. Maybe Watson's who takes Watson on the was option. a wide receiver at old thirty years yeah. freshman year, but he was but maybe, running back in high school. Maybe you put Jay Sutton on the wings, both the fullback and Watson at QB. I think we'll see it pretty quickly. Whatever it is, we'll see it pretty quickly. That yeah, would I think definitely they're gonna come be, out five wide and just start that, throwing bombs. That would be something we've never seen before: is four Memphis running backs on the field at the same time. Is that true? That is true. Absolutely. I know we've seen three at a time, so I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess you're right. Four at once. Four or one seems pretty bizarre. I mean, even when you're counting Antonio, Kenny, we're on the field at the same with maybe Patrick and like the Cotton Bowl were on the field at the same time, but Yeah, I don't know. Do we want to put a case of beer on it? What we think it is? Yeah, it's five wide. Trey okay. doesn't want to... I'll say it's a, a triple option package. The triple option is such a vague I feel like RPOs could be argued as triple well, they do RPO every game, so it doesn't count. I right. still think it's TJ and Trey lining up. Well, they haven't told us that yet. They need to hurry up. Yeah, they I should probably. I mean, you are wearing a jersey today. I need to I get just some want to throw that out there. Conditioning in. Yeah. Go ahead and call the and hydrate the chiropractor, <laughs> my <laughs> doctor. Go ahead and pop a couple of a leave. Get my heating pad. Yeah, man. Stretch out their gun. They need to hit me up if that's the case. I got to get ready. <laughs> Trey, anything else from you on looking at Navy, keys to winning? Uh, nothing looking at it. Let's go uh, first Tutty prediction. Last week, neither one of us picked DJ Bell. <sighs> Shame on us. Would have been incredible odds. Would have absolutely. Too bad you cannot bet on collegiate player props in yeah. Tennessee. 
I'm going to go first touchdown skates because I know he doesn't get a ton I of reception. I thinking skates. But when he does, it's always typically a bomb. I was going to say skates because it felt this feels like first drive bomb to skates down the middle. It's he just, had a bomb last game against or last yeah. year against Navy. He yeah. did. So I, right, right to open the second half. Uh, I'm going to go Watson. It's fair. Watson's actually considered first because I do think we get the running game back. This I'm going to go wild. Who's been returning kickoffs? Kickoffs? It's been Sutton and um. Was it? Is it Brumfield? No. No. It was it Demir. I thought it was Ross. So what do I know? I think it was Ross at one point. So now I don't know who that would be. I'll stick with Watson. Um. All right. Give me your score prediction. I'm gonna go 38-14. 38-14. So you yep. think the defense gives up a tutty? Well, that would be two. two touchdowns, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just because it's one of those things, like I could totally see them late in the game, them driving it, and just kind of – it could be like a 38-7 pretty much until the final three minutes of the game. Notre Dame didn't give up a touchdown, right? Just no. Just a field goal. Just a field goal. <sighs> I want to say 40s, but I just don't feel like we get there because the clock's going to run yeah, out so it's fast. it's so hard with the clock. I, say, I was regretting putting saying 38, but I'd already penciled it in. So it is I feel it like 38 is such, such a good number. Well, you can't have it. I know. I guess you can. 30, I'll go 35 to 9. <laughs> That's the weirdest score. Three field goals? It's happening. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I'll take so three field goals. So you're telling me they're going to go 12 quarters without a touchdown? Who, our defense? Yeah. Oh, I think they're very capable. Yeah, they definitely seem capable. I, I just, <laughs> only reason I'm saying it's 14 because it's something you haven't seen before. Like, I can, at any point in time, all it takes is one guy to be out of place. I know this is, like, pretty much every play, but especially with the triple option. One guy to be out of place, and it's just a 60 Yeah, touchdown. I mean, they're probably going to score on one of their dumb pass plays again. Yeah, I'd streak right down the dead middle of right. number two, and then whatever. It is. I cool. mean, nine could be a touchdown and a missed PAT. It could be. Another kicker situation. Anything else on Navy? No, let's uh, let's thunder pick it and fade TJ. We're both two and one. Yeah, you, two and one on our picks. Might have hit. Did you not lose your very first fade TJ picks? That's why we called it fade TJ. No, I just called it fade TJ because I'm such an awful better. You're three and zero. Three and zero. Well, we've only had two games. I thought you lost the first week. You definitely lost your first one. What was the first? We did a week zero. The week zero one was. um, I don't recall this, guys. Yeah, you definitely lost the first. You week did zero. because the team hadn't won, and it was. Uh, oh oh yeah. yeah, that's UMass. what it was. I did. You're right. Yeah, it was UMass. Yeah. Bitches. You're two and one. We're both two and one. Uh, I should get credit for getting that right because it's something that hasn't been done in 50 years. You anyway. can't get credit for it being for being right when it was literally wrong. It was literally wrong. I know. Uh, my last week you had Notre Dame minus seven and a half against NC State. Easy, easy, easy. and I had Colorado minus three and a half, or maybe it was two and a half. Thirty and a half is what it should have been. Um, and both hit very easily. For show, for show. So give me your fade, TJ, for uh, week three. Dude, I'm taking Penn State minus 15 and a half over Illinois. And I know that's 15 and a half is kind of a lot of points. But Penn State's looked pretty good. And Illinois is dog water. Like absolute dog water. They're not good. They just lost to Kansas. Yeah. Week, right? And I think they barely beat whoever. They played a MAC team week one. <clears throat> and yeah. they barely won. The Penn State looks real, real good. Uh, my Thunder pick this week is going for my boy, Mike. Okay. Over under Florida State Boston College is 48 and a half. You're telling me right now that the Florida State Seminoles and Mike Norvell, who are averaging 56 points a ball game, aren't going to cover that by themselves? You're crazy. Put up 44 on this Boston College team last year. That's a book up over the 48 and a half. Yeah. Another one I like. Any Colorado score, I feel like, at this point. Well, that, but I think they're favored by 23 and a half, and I, that's a lot of points. 
it is a lot of points, but they're also not afraid to just hold the gas down I, the entire time. I agree with you there. But 23 and a half is a lot. I like this K State minus four and a half against Missouri oh, yeah. because Mizzou has looked like doo doo. And I think K State's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I would definitely agree that K State's pretty That's good. That's not my official pick. Just want to watch if you want to throw some or parlay it. I would definitely over the 48 that. and a half in the Florida State Boston College. What was it again? Three? It's four and a half. Four and a, K State. Bet that right, literally right now. TJ is locking it in right in the second. Yeah, I, I just think that that's the second week in a row they've been disrespected. They had one against Troy last week. Who, K-State? Yeah, K-State did, and they obviously handled that one pretty well. Yeah. So. Speaking pretty, of Troy, how's our boy? Uh, He's not. Okay. He's not. I don't think. That's all that was said. I think Blake actually looked at this not too long ago all the transfers and just kind of checking in on see what they did after week one. And it was pretty lack. Not great, Bob. Yeah. Pretty week one, week one, hmm. none of the transfers from last year's team had a single stat stat in the stat sheet. That's actually impressive. Not even Edwin. All stone hands. That is kind of surprising. Did he not? Can no. we confirm? No, it, absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've looked it up. Asa has six carries for 29 yards. He's actually probably doing all right. Cause that's almost five yards a pop. Yeah, but six carries. But only two six games. carries or two games. Like you're being replaced by, or I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Where is Asa Ed again? Uh, Troy. Oh, he's a Troy. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Eddie's got six catches for 89 yards. Kamani Vidal. First of all, Troy, I get it now. Troy's got a running back who has 42 carries, 331 yards, averaging eight yards a carry. Wow. Good for you, guy. Yeah, I mean, I went back and looked at it, too, and I was like, dang, dude, no one's doing a single thing. I, I guess that makes sense, right? Like, you weren't really doing anything here. That's kind of why you're gone. But And then Caden's out for three weeks. Well, I mean, Eddie did it just out of – Eddie and Caden kind of were what they were. Like, yeah. That's not really who I'm making that comment about necessarily. Caden's hurt. Yeah. Uh, all right, Timothy, we got a little bit of basketball news right here in the midst of football Shh. season roping up. Do we? Class of 2024, Jaden Harris committed earlier today. Uh, it's the only one for 2024, right? Yeah, that's our only commit so far. What it was four star shooting guard, real athletic. I think he can be streaky a little bit. Uh, has range though, can shoot the shoot the ball. He's a true true shooting guard. Um, kind of out of nowhere. I think we offered. Maybe a week or two ago, but the kid's got 23 offers, outstanding. Uh, you had us, Houston, uh, Colorado State, TCU, Arkansas. I mean, he's got all kinds of Power 5 offers. Sure. Said once a Tiger, always a Tiger. Maybe, Maybe his high commitment. school mascot's a Tiger. I don't know. That's a good thought. Maybe that is what it is. 76 overall, 14th shooting guard, third overall in Texas. Uh, what do you think that means for the class of 24? Because we know. Uh, it's great. Penny ain't trying to load up on freshmen. <laughs> I think it's great because that's at least one, and that's really all you need, honestly. Uh, what do you think that means as far as Curtis Gibbons and uh, Billy Richmond the third go? I mean, I think never that's any indication one way or the other. Yeah. No. Wait, Kenny says no. I, no. I never thought you were getting Trey Richmond personally. I just I thought. I mean, there are people out there that, that think that is still true that you have no chance. I mean, I don't want to say no chance. <clears throat> I just think that his dad was a Coach Cal disciple, essentially. I mean, not really. He just played for him, but I just never thought you really had a chance. I think they that. absolutely have a chance. I think they're behind, but yeah, I just don't think they're going to land him. Let me let me phrase it that way. I don't. You think got some ground to make up. I think with Curtis, there's a chance. I think it's much more likely to land that one than it would be for Trey. Well, I think they made a move this week to make that readily apparent. Yeah. Jamie Rosser, former Overton High School basketball star, is now the uh, – coming from – I can't remember where he came from, but now he's the um, director of basketball operations. Oh, okay. And I, I'll say this. Jamie Rosser, <clears throat> I, we played, I played against him in high school. And him and Marcus Moody. You dunked on him? Torched me. They were so Wait, good. Wait, where'd you play? Carryville. Wow. My brother played at Ridgeway. They were probably like Dragon. the same age. Dragons. <laughs> what year did you graduate? Uh, 99. 
Yeah, you and my brother played the same year. You know, we were both 99. <laughs> he probably dunked on me. Uh, I don't know that he ever dunked on a game, but you might have been the game he hit seven threes in the first half. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, all right, T. Let's get into this. Is it John, for basketball? I, think I don't think we, we have right. anything else. Yeah, we. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a a downtime for now. Yeah, it'll be ramping up here. Pretty uh, soon, I feel like getting into October, and you know whether or not they're going to be having a Memphis Madness or not. And we'll get into it. Start ramping up mid football season. Jean Deli. Uh. I'm going to be honest with you. It, the first sip punched me in the face, but I did not know what to expect. Despite you know reading, it says ice pick style lager. With yeah, I was going to say limits. the first couple of sips were a lot off the front end. I'll, but we talked about this a little bit off air. This felt like one where you needed to maybe mix up. The, we'll just like mix up the tea settlement on the bottom. Just do this Give it one of these. a little bit. Just kind of mix. <clears throat> I also thought it might be one where it was like best served poured into a glass. You know, where you get the mix of all the stuff, but it doesn't say that anywhere. John Daly. John Daly. Why are you you're just we already went through this? No, I paid attention to the flower pants and the cigar and the cigarette, and I didn't really think about John Daly is literally what that says. Yes. That's I never what thought we about talked that. About at the you top. said it, but it didn't click in my head until just now. And I'm like, John Daly. John Daly. John Daly. It's my it's like a mad gab. Yeah. Say it fast. It literally just clicked in my head. John Daly. Um, pretty cool can. I, feel I do like, like I this mean, can. I'm a big golf guy, though, so I'm a little biased. Well, I think it's cool because you got the lemons. His head is a lemon as well. He's got the colorful pants on. And it's just like it's kind of a golf beer. Kind of. His yeah, head is a lemon on have, one. And you can have several of these the out on the course. Um, I like this can, though. I'm going – I might – it's pretty good. It doesn't can. feel like a normal Wiseacre can with like kind of the craziness, you know what I mean? Yeah. The lines and squiggles and stuff all over the place. Uh, but it's a good can. I'm gonna go seven three on this bad boy. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good score. And I think that's fair. I'm probably gonna go with the seven flat. It's a good can. There's a lot going on here. It's kind of cool. A lot of maybe some over usage of the color green, but it's pretty cool. There is a lot of green on there, but it's golf. There's a lot of green in golf. That's fair. Uh in terms of the beer, I liked it. I did too. I like think I said, that if those, I knew what it was, it'd be a little. Those bit first better. couple of sips were uh, a little weird, but yeah. I think that was just it if, wasn't mixed up properly. Um, would you say it tastes like a beer? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't either. This isn't a. This is not uh, very beery at all. So maybe it's for the people out there that don't like beer. I think this could be a good, a good Christian beer. We can have Christian <laughs> drink this. Not like the religion, uh -oh. the, the person. That is what I, I was uh -oh. like. What is that? I wanted to specify there. Not it's be the religion. a good communion beer. <laughs> it's Christian, the the man. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah. Christian would like this. Wow. <laughs> oh Doyle. Oh, uh. I don't know that I would just like drink this at home, but I would definitely grab a couple of these and throw them in the golf cart while I'm playing. No, I think I, I would definitely. For me personally, I, I think it's pretty good. I don't think maybe it's very even, maybe even a real hot Tiger Lane. Like if we play Boise at yeah two thirty into September and it's eighty five out there on Tiger Lane, I might tell you to pick up a couple of John Daly's. I don't. <laughs> it makes sense now. Um, Bring a couple of John Daly's to the Bluff City at ten. Pretty, pretty drinkable. I think now oh, that it's I'm definitely drinkable. It definitely something you want to drink super cold. I feel like mm. mine kind of got hot towards the last <clears throat> bit there. Um, is it weird that I want to say it's so not beer like that I feel like it would be good poured over ice? It probably would be good poured over ice. Actually, and that's weird about it. Well, it'd be like an iced tea. Yeah, yeah. It, it is an ice pick style lager, which is like a vodka and tea mixture technically. <clears throat> so, um, pretty good beer. I think I'm unfortunately going to go with a seven flat out of ten. I know I did that with the can, but. Wow, just sevens across the board from Timothy. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I, it grew on me. I think it needs to be cold. And it's not very beery. It didn't leave me with like a malty yeah. aftertaste in my mouth, and I could drink too many of them. And it's 5%. Normally when you get some of these beers that are like not beer-like, they're like 2%, like that one we had. Yeah. That was delicious, but it was like it was 2%. Um, I'm a little bit above you. I'm going to say like 7.5. That's fair. Which is what, isn't that what I gave the can? Wow, uh, seven three, I think is what you yeah, gave the okay. can. 
Um, very good. But again, I wouldn't just grab one of these at the house. This would have to be like a a golf round, hot tiger lane. Yeah, I'm not sitting on the couch. Maybe a, maybe a lake. It. I could like floating around out on the boat or something. I could. I have feel like I need these. to be outside drinking it for sure. Oh, yeah, it's not like a. We needed to open the windows or something tonight to <laughs> take that one on. All right, Trey. Anything else, man? No. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Get in the Discord. Um, check out BluffCityMedia.co. Our boy Blake's got you covered all football season long. Oh, yeah. Basketball stuff ramping up. Check out on the Bluff, the Anthony Sane Show. Um, and we'll see you out on uh, Tiger Lane Thursday night. So Tigers take on the midshipmen. 6.30. Be there or be a square. Come with the cold beer. Stay without takes. Peace. If you enjoyed this episode of Tigers Untapped, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Like and subscribe at Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports.